Hi, welcome to another episode of Pet Pals here at FCG TV. I'm Bethany Davidson, the Humane Educator at Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. Animal wrangling for us is our volunteer coordinator, Sean Snyder, and we've been doing a lot of dogs lately, and we do have something a little different for you, especially for all those cat lovers who may be disappointed when they tune in. Um, we have a cat for you today, and Anthony is just one of many cats that have become available in recent weeks on our cat floor. I counted um, not that long ago, and it was almost 40 cats now, and uh, while the majority of them are still adult cats like Anthony, we do have two litters of kittens that are currently on the adoption floor. Um, they'll likely go fast, so if you're interested in kittens, you might want to check in, call, email, um, look on our you know, Pet Tango site, make sure that they are still available before making the trip. Um, Anthony is um, super sweet and super handsome and very confident and just like I fell in love with him like right away. He's, there's nothing not to like about Anthony. Um, he's about two years old, so still a young cat. A lot of people are like, I want a young cat that can grow with my family. He's only two. He's going to be with you for a really long time. Um, he is a larger cat weighing in at about 16 pounds, so possibility possibility of you know maybe a diet being beneficial for him but uh, there's more to love and he um, is quite comfortable cuddling being on a lap um, I think one of the volunteers yesterday was sitting with him he was sitting right close to her um, on on a little bench so um, definitely pretty easy going settles into new environments really quickly he's never been up here before he's kind of looking around taking it in but not trying to hide not trying to escape um, which you know says a lot about him um, he um, initially, you know, wouldn't necessarily come to you for attention, but as he's getting, you know, more comfortable in the environment, he's starting to do those things more. Um, you can pick him up fairly easily. Um, initially, it said he would get tense and stuff, but I haven't had any issues picking him up. He seems quite comfortable. Um, but he is a larger cat, so you need to be mindful uh, of that as well. Um, but he's, you know, super friendly. He's a you know, loves attention, but, you know, sometimes prefers to keep his feet on the ground. So how do you think he'd do with a cat friend? So I feel like uh, Anthony would do really well with a cat friend. Number one, he came in with another cat, um, Mark, who is already scheduled for adoption. So um, they, you know, they were cohabitating. Uh, and recently we moved him into the Kitty Cabana, which is one of our open cat rooms. And while he's not fully integrated with the cat who lives in there with him, Jorge, um, he's super curious about Jorge. He likes to go and hang out by the transition cage and walk around and kind of introduce himself. Jorge's still feeling a little nervous, but Anthony's like, hey, I'm a good neighbor. Let's be friends. Um, so I don't think that he would have any trouble settling into a multi-cat home, um, especially with those proper introductions. Um, if you're interested in making Anthony or any of uh, the cats that we have uh, currently on our adoption floor part of your family, you need to make an appointment to stop by and visit so you can get to know them a little bit, figure out which one is the right one for your, your household. And the way to do that is by going to visit fcac.as.me to book those visitation appointments. As you've heard me say many, many times, we have a lot of dogs available for adoption right now. Even we, we were at hold and steady at about 20 for a while, but now we've, we've upped that number a little bit. Um, and a lot of people always say, why do you have so many pit bull mixes? We do still have a lot of pit bull mixes, but today we're going to introduce you some of the, to some of the dogs that we have of other breed types. Um, and the first one that we have for you today is Bella, and she is a healer mix. Um, She's a relatively young dog at just 11 months old, and uh, she's super cute. She's a great size. She's not even 30 pounds. Uh, she's 23 pounds, I believe. Um, so she's a great size, going to fit into a lot of living spaces. Um, but she's a, a herding breed. She's a working dog, which means that they have a little bit more energy um, than maybe um, some of the other dogs you might see at our facility. Um, so it's going to be important to make sure that she has some things to keep her occupied. Um, but she did really well with her behavior assessment. As you can see, she's very focused on people. She's very interested in people, very social. Um, she's fairly confident. Um, she you know, does really well when people approach her kennel. Um, she does really well with the other dogs, initiating play, you know, um, having you know, positive body language when she's interacting with them. And she did live with uh, another dog in her previous home. Um, just, you know, sometimes, you know, needs to work on like leash walking, you know, finishing up those house training things. But otherwise, um, she's a really sweet, affectionate dog, but again, super busy. <laughs> so her profile does indicate that she is active. So what are what could her new owner do to keep her activity level 
um, give her things to be active. Sure. So, um, you know, making sure that she has plenty of enrichment things to keep her occupied. So sometimes that can mean, um, you know, different types of, of food presentations. So, you know, slow feeders, puzzle feeders, um, or busy boxes, you know, putting toys and treats in boxes and they have to kind of find them out. Um, dogs like this are great for, you know, actual like dog sports. Um, so things like agility, if you have the time, she would be great for, or, um, you know, rally and different types of things like that that are going to give her that outlet for her energy, but also really work her mind because um, a lot of working dogs are incredibly intelligent. Um, and just overall basic good manners training really helps with that as well. Um, it builds that relationship between the owner and the dog, helps the dog have good manners, but it gives them um, something to keep their mind busy and occupied. And, and that's going to be important because just like, you know, a lot of people talk about little kids when they don't have anything to do, they get into trouble. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our pets are the same way. So you want to make sure um, that you have um, what it takes to keep up with her energy level and make sure that she has that appropriate stimulation. Um, if you think that that's going to be, you know, the right fit for you, um, if you want to meet Bella, obviously you want to go to that um, booking website and make your appointment. But you can also give us a call and inquire, make sure she's still available. Um, and you can do that by calling 301-600-1546. Everybody loves a beagle, and we currently have two. Um, this is one of our two beagles. Um, this is Filbert, and he is the older of the two. He's about five to six years old, or excuse me, six to seven. And then there is another beagle that you can see, you know, on our social media and things like that, um, named Fergus. And he's a little bit younger and about uh, three years old. And you can see he's very adept at, as hounds are, following his nose. He quickly found all of those treats and wanted to devour them. Um, he is a unique dog in that, you know, he has the tricolor, which is the standard, but he does have one blue eye, which definitely sets him apart, makes him a little bit cuter. Um, super social, very friendly, as you can see, a little bit of a lap dog. Um, they love interacting with people, both of them. They're very social, um, but they don't really have a lot of good manners training. They will jump up on you, but very gently, just, you know, attention seeking. Um, we haven't had any like, serious issues with them. Um, we have not, they came in as strays, and we have some indication that they may be hunting dogs. Um, so they're very quiet, um, as which is not super usual and uh, normal for uh, your standard hound mixes, but because they were used for those purposes, they're a little bit uh, quieter. Um, but when they're mostly outside dogs, not super great with the house training, so um, definitely going to need a little bit of work in that department, but super easy to kind of work through, especially when they're as friendly as um, Filbert here is. Um, doesn't have any issues with most dogs, but some dogs, depending on who's walking by in the kennel, he can be a little bit more reactive. Um, but that's why it's important to bring your dog into our facility and make sure that they're going to be a good match. Um, but no issues with food aggression, not super interested in toys, obviously loves affection, but can be a little bit nervous in some new environments. Um, on the medical side of things, you know, as a lot of the, the hound dogs that we see in our facility, he, he did kind of test positive for Lyme disease, which is, is you know, not a huge deal. Yeah. So what's the treatment for that then? So um, what we typically do here and what most people do is it's if they're showing symptoms, um, which would be like a little bit of lameness and some other things, the lameness and the kind of the limping stiffness in the joints is something that's the most visible. Um, but there are a couple of other symptoms your vet can talk to you about. Um, we start them on a 30-day cycle of doxycycline, which is just an antibiotic. Um, after that, it's generally recommended that they get the Lyme vaccine to help them. Um, but then you're just observing. You're looking for any symptoms, any flare-ups, and then they get that, you know, that doxycycline treatment um, when you're seeing flare-ups. It's not a huge, um, you know, deal. We don't seem to have any trouble adopting out dogs, um, a variety of breeds that have tested positive for Lyme. Um, but that's why it's really important to maintain, um, you know, all of your dog's vaccinations, but also those flea and tick preventatives, um, heartworm preventatives, all of those things are really uh, important. We want to make sure that, you know, you're doing that to help prevent things um, like um, Filbert situation here where he's tested positive for that. Um, if you're interested in making a Filbert or Fergus uh, part of your family, when you know whichever beagle is, you know, is your, your top pick, um, you want to do that by making an appointment. You can go to visit fcac.as.me to do that. Our next guest, a little bit bigger in size. Um, you know, some people like smaller dogs, other people like a bigger dog. Lainey's about 66 pounds and uh, 
uh, she is a Dutch shepherd. Um, if you are, you know, someone who is constantly watching our, our, our Facebook page, um, you may be like, well, she looks super familiar. She, this is actually her second stay with us. Uh, originally, she was here, and her name was Airborne. Um, and then she got adopted, um, which was awesome. And through no fault of her own, she got returned. So what happened was um, Lainey's, you know, being a good dog, and the other existing dog in the household started doing a lot of resource guarding um, in her presence. And and um, the owners felt like they had a responsibility, as they should, to the dog that they had had for longer. Um, and so they brought Lainey back to us so that we could find her uh, another suitable home environment. Um, Lainey's about a year old, so she still has plenty of energy. Um, she is very trainable, um, but she, while she likes toys, or likes treats, excuse me, um, she seems to be more motivated by play. She's highly energetic. So, you know, some of those things that we talked about with Bella in terms of, you know, how to deal with a dog that's pretty busy um, might also be um, effective for Lainey. Um, but uh, you know she does you know um, do well with her with her cues. Um, she's good at learning. Um, sometimes you just have to find the right the right thing for her. You know a treat may not always be super motivating for her, um, but a toy will. Um, so just kind of finding that that balance with her is going to be important. So Lainey recently attended a dog training academy. What was that all about? So we work with a, a dog training facility um, called Peaceable Paws, and they train other dog trainers. And so often when they're in need of students for their students, they will pull dogs from us. Um, Lainey recently went to a behavior modification academy. And so some of the things that we were sending her there for were, like when she was getting handled for vet restraint, she was like you know moving around a lot, not super comfortable with it. So um, her person was gonna work with her on that, but then they also found that Lainey can be a little bit of aloof, um, not super focused on, on the handler and things like that. So they also worked with her on doing some different games that can help her bring her attention and focus back to her handler. Um, and they, they are really the ones who discovered that she's more play motivated um, in terms of her training um, than food, um, especially when she's getting a lot of food consistently. She's kind of like, eh. Um, so they were really beneficial in helping us figure out some of those things. And um, because she went to that academy, um, the person who was her handler for the week did write a profile and gave you know, a, a lengthy kind of uh, journal on how they, what they did that day, how Lainey did, um, so that that will be available for any adopter. Um, plus, um, the adopters of any of the dogs that go to any of those classes do either get you know, a free class or a free consultation um, that they can continue to use um, to build on all of those things that the dogs have learned. Uh, and that would be um, something that applies for Lainey as well. If you're interested in um, you know, giving Lainey all of the toys and doing all of the play that she wants and making her part of your family, uh, again, go to visit fcac.as.me um, to start that process. Our next dog is a little bit bigger still, <laughs> um, about 73 pounds, I think. This is Argus, and he is our American Bulldog. Um, he's an incredibly handsome guy. You can't even tell how handsome he is from the photographs that I took of him that have been posted because it's hard to see with the lighting um, because all of the black kind of blends in back there. Um, but hopefully on the show you can see how truly handsome he is. He's super muscular um, and he's very friendly. Um, he has a lot of really great qualities, but he is still a young dog at one to two years old who doesn't really know his own strength. Um, so he needs to work on like, you know, polite leash walking, not jumping up onto people, um, but he really needs an owner who can physically handle, you know, him out on, on, on walks, especially when he's still learning to walk nicely and not pull. Um, you know, we have a lot of, um, you know, dogs that are in this, um, you know, 60 to Bastion, who's 93 pounds, I think, um, range. So you want to make sure that you, you know, you do feel comfortable, you know, taking them out and handling them um, when necessary. Um, but he's very playful. They say that he loves to investigate the world. He's been very sweet with, with people engaging with them. Um, no sit already is very relaxed. Um, so, you know, those are just a, a few of, of the good things that we've seen about him. No issues with food aggression, um, leans and enjoys touch, um, you know, a lot of, of positive qualities for this guy. But you definitely want to make sure that you're invested into, you know, training him properly because he is so strong and making sure that you feel comfortable handling him. 
So how do we think Argus would do with other dogs? So Argus with other dogs is a little hit or miss. Um, there's a little burp there, buddy. Um, you know, in the kennel, a lot of dogs don't do well either with the dogs walking past them or them walking past other dogs in the kennels because there's barriers and there can be barrier frustration and it's just super stressful. Um, so, you know, in the kennel environment, it really just has been dependent on the dog. Um, we were um, taking his testing a little bit further and did some outside testing with some dogs. Uh, Cinnamon, who is like our you know, our go-to dog testing dog who loves everybody. Um, he did pretty well with her. Initially, he was a little bit like, I don't know how to dog. I'm not communicating really well. But then he kind of settled in and was doing, you know, typical play bows and stuff like that. Um, but he can be a little bit rude in terms of his play style. Um, so it's not every dog is going to tolerate that. So um, again, that's why it's really important to, you know, make sure that you're following our requirement of bringing your dog um, to our facility. Um, we've even had some people who are like, I don't have another dog, but I'm constantly with, at my parents' house and they have a dog or whatever. We, we've done meet and greets with those types of situations as well. Um, but also the, the proper introductions are going to be key. Um, even if you know they do well here at home, that's a different process. So you want to make sure you're following that and making sure that that's going to work out well. Um, if you're interested in making Argus part of your family, um, you can um, obviously make that appointment to visit. Um, it's possible because he doesn't do so well walking past the other dogs that he may be a dog that we ask you to meet um, by specifically telling us and we'll take him outside for you. Um, so if you're, you're walking through the dog floor and you don't see him, be sure to ask our admin staff and they can get um, one of our staff to get him out for you. We couldn't do a show without having a Pitbull mix on the show. Um, so we brought you the tiniest Pitbull mix that we have right now. This is Ozzy. Um, and he is, um, you know, what you would call probably the runt of the litter. Um, he's about five months old. Um, we had a six month old dog that we went back to the rescue where he came from recently and he was like, twice this size um, at just a month older. So at five months old, he's, he's only about 17 pounds, so he's still quite small for his age. Um, and he is an all-white pit bull mix, and oftentimes those all-white um, pitties seem to have some hearing issues, and Ozzy does have some hearing impairments um, to the extent of, of which I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, it's hard. sometimes it can be a little hard to get Ozzy's attention if he can't see you, because um, he can't hear you. Um, he is your typical puppy. Um, you know, it doesn't, his, his hearing impairment does not affect his view of the world. He doesn't know any different. He's very affectionate, he's very playful, but also as a puppy, he doesn't have any manners yet. So he's relying on his new adopter to make sure that they teach him all of those basic good manners. Um, you know, working on house training, obviously, as a young dog, you know, he just can't hold it for as long um, and making sure that, you know, you're really implementing that training process, but teaching him not to, you know, climb all over people um, or um, he needs to work on, you know, what is appropriate to put his mouth on. You know, we, we chew on our toys. Um, but all of those things are things that you would get with any puppy, um, regardless of, of where you're adopting the puppy or the puppy's special needs circumstances. Um, Ozzy has spent some time in a foster care, so he has been socialized um, in a home environment, which is wonderful. Um, we have extensive medical notes. He had some kennel cough that he's recovered from. So we have all of that information for you. We typically don't do the behavior assessments that you see for the adult dogs on the puppies because puppies' personalities aren't quite set yet. Um, and they're, you know, their behaviors and mannerisms. So um, they wouldn't necessarily be accurate for you know, um, an extended period of time. So you may not see one of those in there unless he is here for with us for an extended period of time and gets to the age where we think it's appropriate. So you mentioned that Ozzy is hearing impaired. So how is training a dog like Ozzy different from another dog? So for the most part, all of those basics, you know, the things that we use, the positive reinforcement training, are exactly the same. Um, but with a, a dog that's hearing impaired, you know, where we might use a clicker or give a verbal yes to indicate that he did something well, um, some people use like a thumbs up. Um, the most important thing is, you know, understanding that you're gonna have to use visual cues for him because he's not gonna be able to hear you, um, and teaching him to check in with his handler um, you know it's we want him to keep looking at you so that you can give him those cues otherwise he won't be able to get them um, um, teaching him a really good recall making sure that he's always on a leash because he's not going to be able to hear say you know traffic or, or anything like that so there's a little bit of, of extra involved but for the most part um, it's the same as teaching you know any other dog and we have had um, several other dogs with hearing impairments and they get adopted relatively quickly without any issues we've taken them to events um, 
Um, so it's just making sure that, that you're prepared to do those modifications. Some people create their own hand signals, some people use ASL. Um, it's totally up to you how you want to do it, but it's possible. Um, it just might take a little bit uh, more patience, a little bit more time, and some creativity. Um, if you have the patience <laughs> needed um, to raise a new puppy, um, and that's what you're looking to do. Um, you can make an appointment to visit Ozzy by going to visit fcac.as.me. We hope that you enjoyed uh, meeting all of these adoptable pets. Again, um, we are um, starting to get into that summer mode where we have a lot of animals to choose from. So if you didn't see something that you want to make part of your family today, definitely stop in and visit anyway. Um, there's a lot more to choose from. And we do have a special promotion that we want to make sure everyone is aware of for the month of June um, in honor of all of the, the great work that the educators um, have been doing this school year. Um, all of anybody who works in a school system, you know, college, public school, um, private school, uh, whether you work in the cafeteria, or your teacher's aide, or um, work in the office, all of those um, wonderful uh, people are going to be able to adopt a dog for or a cat or any animal for free uh, during this month, um, the month of June. Um, so if you are an in the educational system and you're looking to add to your family, um, definitely stop by and visit us as well. Thanks for watching.